I really view health equity with an entrepreneurial lens. Economic stability is such an important piece of building healthy people and healthy communities. We saw that there was a need for programs or projects to increase people's wealth. Through our program, the Center for Economic Growth, uh, we have PSU Small Business Development Center who helps provide startup services for our businesses and connect them to local and regional resources. The company that I just acquired is Dawn Woods Moving. Uh, they've been here in the community for over 50 years. Um, I've been running the company for about a year and a half now. It was a long process when I initially came um, and tried to put in an offer on the business. Uh, that there was a bank that wasn't necessarily willing to work with me just because of my, I guess, lack of history um, as far as being in business. Uh, I came here and worked with the staff um, with the HB Cat, and they helped with all the financial projections, the cash flow projections, um, pretty much everything from start to finish. We also have Southeast Kansas Works here at our office to help with anyone who's looking for employment. And we know that there's gaps in that. And so they have programs to help with our population of focus and removing those gaps and those barriers. HBCAT um, noticed something that, you know, was just quite, wasn't there. And so at Kansas Works, the uh, collaboration, the partnership with that has been instrumental. When COVID happened, it was kind of an unknown territory, you know, something we've never experienced and never imagined experience. So we saw needs that probably we would have never saw before, things that popped up. HBCAT saw that, and instead of just working on stuff that wasn't needed, it really opened up an avenue that was something that was really needed for community. Um, as mayor, we saw the needs for small businesses, um, you know, people losing jobs, off work, maybe for multiple extended time. And that collaboration with HBCAT and Kansas Work really pushed people forward, probably something they thought they couldn't do. Um, and so out of all the bad things of COVID, it really turned something um, negative into something positive for us. With the Centers for Economic Growth, with these new partnerships and programs through Rural Community Partners, these regional organizations, we're really able to increase the number of resources available for people, which increases the opportunity for our population to focus. We really wanted to address community and social context with a health equity lens. We wanted to make sure that all of our projects were collaborative, they had a shared vision, and that they were informed by the people we're aiming to serve, who would be most impacted by them. We have our community health worker here, who maybe those barriers are just too much for a person right now. And so that community health worker helps remove those barriers so that they can eventually enter into the workforce. As a community health worker, um, what I do is I work with individuals in the community that need help. Um, they may need access to medical care, they may need um, assistance with rental, um, finding a rental home, they may need help with utilities, maybe they're food insecure, maybe they're just new to the community and they don't know what resources we have, and I am that link. The local health equity action team is a coalition part of the Healthy Bourbon County Action Team and it's comprised of community health workers, um, community members with lived experience, and community organizations. And as a group, we develop strategies to make community change um, and leverage our partnerships to be able to make an impact. So as part of the Local Health Equity Action Team, um, they have established uh, loads of love um, at two locations in Fort Scott and what that does is it allows our homeless population and our low-income population to come and wash their clothing at no cost. That was one of the things that the community health workers really did a great job at was um, getting rid of, well, educating the citizens on um, homelessness and trying to get rid of the stigmatism associated with it. So our placemaking projects, we held public forums and surveys. It's not enough for us to just send out a survey or have a town hall forum, which are very good strategies, but it's not enough for us. We want to have that active engagement. We've had several placemaking projects uh, throughout the county. We involved citizens from the beginning uh, where they got to inform 
every decision we make. So we have several parks around town. One of them is the Third Street Park. And when HB Cat started um, their initiative to improve Third Street Park, it was not a park that I would want to take my kids to, um, especially when two of my children have special needs. But since Healthy Bourbon County Action Team became involved and started um, helping to improve that park, we have put in a multi-sensory um, playground equipment. Bathrooms have been rehabbed. It provides a really great space and safe space for kids. Here at the Healthy Bourbon County Action Team, we saw a need for childcare and its impact on economic development. Uh, we decided to form a coalition comprised of childcare professionals and those community organizations. And they got to identify their needs and develop programming and um, seek grant funding to help them. We're able to work in partnership with the school districts, we have two in Bourbon County, to implement policy. What we're able to do is just help them with the, the language and the policy, on moving the policy forward to get adopted by the board, and then given some grant dollars to implement that policy. HBCAT has also partnered with the, the schools on the water, fill, water bottle filling stations and then also um, making sure students have clear or translucent water bottles. HBCAT's also helped with uh, the courtyard at the school as well as some playground equipment at the school and also um, establishing times and community awareness for when people can come and use the exercise facilities that are available at the school. All of our educational institutions, we were able to get them engaged and involved in our worksite wellness. So that's all of the buildings and even our community college. With that, they were able to get you know, courtyards, they were able to get uh, Zumba classes, standing desks. The community college even has a 24 access uh, room um, for, for faculty and, and students to use. Increasing access to amenities like that will help people make the choice to, I mean, before they didn't even have the choice to, to visit the gym or not, but they didn't have the choice. So we're trying to make it easier. So the health and all policy is really a unique tool to get agencies working together that benefits all the citizens because no matter if you're city, county, school or whatever, we all have the same bosses. The citizens are our bosses. The bike share program is one of my favorites. The bike share program allows our citizens to rent a bike from one of, I believe, five locations in town. And then they can take it to get to work, go get groceries, get something to eat. This also helps build a lot of health equity for those that don't have a license or a vehicle to drive. So the Prairie Pathways connects three different cities in Southeast Kansas. Uh, it connects Allen County to Bourbon County and to, then to uh, Crawford County um, and allows uniform you know, planning of trips and easy to access bike routes. In 2017, we uh, were able to do, uh, to do the comprehensive multimodal transportation plan for countywide, for the city of Uniontown, for the city of Fort Scott, and that eventually became a part of their smart growth economic development strategy. So we were able to lay the foundation for all of that stuff. Right now they're working on the Riverfront Trail using our plans. So we were able to, to set the stage for other things to eventually happen. So in 2017, we acquired what we call the Pump Track. It's for bicyclers um, and it's located right outside of Gun Park. It's kind of a challenging off-road type of a course to get you geared up and prepared for going out on the courses. I believe there are nine wayfinding uh, kiosks uh, throughout the city of Fort Scott. And those just provide a uniform way for bikers to have guidance on where they are at any given point in time. Building resilient food systems is a passion of mine. So all you can see across all of Bourbon County are these open fields and cows. But then during COVID, 
you couldn't have, you, you couldn't get any food. There was this uh, bottleneck within the grocery stores. The, the refrigerators were bare. How do we look at that and talk with our community members who are impacted by this and say, how do we increase access to locally produced food? How do we build up lo local business owners who are producers themselves? And how do we help restaurants and food retail understand that they too can sell locally produced food? We held huge buy and meet eat and greets. We have created three directories now, and we're really working on building a more regional approach to our food system work. So when they first started the meet and eat and greet um, that uh, HBCAT did, I believe it was back in 2016, um, they had created a wholesale directory back then and we have actually updated um, and kept that directory kind of moving forward in 2024. We have kept those doors open for wholesale relationships with local producers and local buyers. And so they're providing access. HBCAT has always worked to provide access. So we started Perry's Produce. Um, we took our first orders in March of 2023. And in our first year, so in the year of 2023, not even a full year, we were able to um, sell over 700 produce boxes and that is doing produce just once a month. Um, the demand has grown so much that we're actually starting two times a month now. We have continued to expand. Um, we actually have just partnered with another local community in the next county over in Allen County. And so we are going to be using that location as well as another location here in Bourbon County. We do deliveries to those communities as well. The Healthy Bourbon County Action Team helps Fort Scott both uh, in a community de development capacity and an economic development capacity with the main goal of being um, an organization that helps to build health equity among all of our citizens. Honestly, HBCAT's been a goddess in the Bourbon County and it's something, as it's been going on longer now, people don't realize probably how important it is and because it's just one of those things that it, it's so utilized now and it's so common that it's one of those things you probably wouldn't know what you miss until it was gone. But honestly, having it and being involved day to day and seeing what Jody does, and it really is something that's truly needed and beneficial to our community. I think one of the really cool things that HBCAT does is they don't forget about the little guys. Um, and what I mean by little guys is our county seat is of course Fort Scott, but Bronson, Uniontown, Redfield, Mapleton, Zini, um, you know, these are all small rural communities that are within the county and they do as much as they can, you know, wanting to get everyone involved. So I, as a person who works in the field of prevention, to me, prevention starts from the cradle. It starts at birth and, and goes up. And so when you can shrink health disparities, increase protective factors, decrease risk factors, through all of the things that Bourbon County Action Team are doing, we're helping to build solid future generation of Fort Scotians. So that's kind of what we do now. We help build up HB Cats in five different other counties and plus, I mean, we're getting, we're providing technical assistance and support to Western Kansas communities now. Our business assistance model has been modeled in two different counties in Western Kansas. We've been able to see uh, go from three unique, unique clients from the Small Business Development Center to 160 in three years' time. That's incredible no matter how you look at it. When we were able to co-locate our community health workers with our Kansas Works, they went from 11 enrollees to 298 in three years' time, or in, in six months' time. So 11 to 298 in six months' time. With a population of 7,500 in Fort Scott, People ask us all the time, like, how are we able to take on all of this work that we do? And it's really quite simple. And it's because we work through policy systems and environmental changes. With that approach, we're really able to have the highest impact with the lowest amount of individual effort. So we're able to work across all different types of sectors, uh, address all of the social determinants of health, really focus on health equity and partnerships and collaboration, and we're able to make a huge impact with small amount of individual effort.